Gates back and away they go. Very slow beginning there for Iron Heart, one of the outsiders. Aussie Banker pinged the lids from Store One, gets into a lovely early position. Naval Commander is also prominent in the Unibet. Three Uniboosts today, handicap, part of the London Mile series. And it's Naval Commander and Aussie Banker, these two at the head of affairs. Towards the right, as we look at them, Imperial Sands. Our Plano is in the green and white colours, also prominent. The beige sleeves of Sun King also up there in the vanguard. Alexander James in the black and red colours, big white face of Hafita Lane also black and red but that's towards uh, the uh, rear of mid division a hard pulling shoot to kill in the dark cap followed by Uzinso then course of session Cliffs of Capri the old boy is at the rear of the field as they make their way towards the end of the back straight I say at the rear of the field last but one the slow starting high at heart is right at the back of the field as they make the turn at the top of the track final four furlongs Imperial Sands out in front two in second position now Bear Force One who's moved into a more prominent posse then the big white face of Naval Commander Aussie Banker the Black Steve has had a lovely run round Alexander James just been shuffled back a little bit. Then Sun King, Agua Plano is coming the scenic route. Then Uzinso trying to get involved. Then Hafita Lane shoot to kill. Cliffs of Capri, Court of Session still towards the rear of the field. And Ironheart is right at the back. They've swung for home, just over two furlongs left to go. And it's Imperial Sands who's come through the lead by a couple of lengths now to Bear Force One in second. Aussie Bank has had a lovely run round, but isn't at the moment able to overhaul this leader, Imperial Sands, who's out in front by a couple of lengths. Aussie Banker has now been peeled out for a run and begins to kick in the turbo, far side Imperial Sands, near side Aussie Banker, Aussie Banker is making up ground with Imperial Sands, maybe finding a bit more as they go towards the line, Imperial Sands has beaten Aussie Banker, tight for third, Hafita Lane I think just got that over Agua Plano and Sun King, it was close for fourth between those two. It's currently a winner a day for jockey Holly Doyle, she gets on Imperial Sands for Archie Watson, and new owners on this occasion, Rydale Racing. Gutsy performance when Holly got to the front from Stall 11. I did think it was a cracking run from Aussie Banker. £10 rise for the two wins. Just didn't quite get there in time. Hafita Alan has run well back in third in a pretty much a bunch finish. But this horse, £15,000 he was bought back for at the Tat Sales back in October. New colours today. Archie was keen to keep hold of him. And this was an impressive performance because he had to work quite hard to get to the front under Holly Doyle, but he's always been a very good horse on this surface in particular. I remember when he won his novice first time out where he was extremely impressive on this surface. He struggled off a high handicap mark, but down to 96, a month ago in a slightly weaker company than what he's been accustomed to in recent starts. And that's a good effort from the front. The runner-up done absolutely nothing wrong at all. In the opulence thoroughbred colours, Sun King, not a bad debut for George Bowie's team. Just been outrun for the places in the final few yards. But I think this is strong form and our winner clearly enjoyed the dropping grade but a good ride as usual from Holly Doyle from Store 11, Tom. An archetypal excellent ride, wasn't it, from Holly Doyle from the front. She set her own pace, stacked them all up as she came into the home turn and then quick and clear and they could not catch her despite Aussie Banker's best attempts, George. No, it was a very tactically astute ride. You could see from her wide draw in 11, she wasn't the quickest away, and as we seem to have really good effect at Kempton, since it's been put in on the weather, stayed out wide and gradually eased over. Just so she was giving herself options to see if someone wanted to rock and roll and go forward and go hard, she was going to be able to slot, try and slot in somewhere, maybe in a bit, bit wide. But she's just gradually come over over a couple of furlongs period, and no one wanted the lead at all, did they? And it's meant that she's able to dictate. I she's, do find that odd, though. Do you not think, because I mean, it, it, ha it does help you at the pace generally at Kempton, particularly if you're not going very fast. And the fact that no one wanted it is, seems a little bit strange. Well, in, in a race which potential had, I sort of had four potential front runners down, and Imperial Sounds being one of them, um, Bear Force won and went forward from the wide draw as well, but they didn't want to lead. And, and the only reason why Holly's had to sort of progress things is when Bear Force One has moved up and Lewis Edmonds to a sort of nearly on her shoulder, she's had to go forward and to hold that position, but you can just see how messy it is in behind for everyone, and it, it is extremely messy, and I think you can upgrade any, anything's form that's come from any further back than sort of just behind the leaders, really. I would absolutely agree with that. I think even though Aussie Banker wasn't too far off the pace, I just feel as though Imperial Sands has completely bossed the fractions, and that has actually been the difference between winning and losing. I think Aussie Banker needs a bit of credit here because he's the only one who's come out of the pack and actually had a go. I think, well, my sort of interpretation of it would be 
when Holly kicked just before the intersection, she took a couple of lengths out of the field, and that was completely the winner of the race. Mm -hmm. That was a race winning move. You can see her here. She's just got rolling just before the opportunity of horses to able to switch right hand down at the intersection, and she's kept rolling it. And if you look, she's taken a couple of lengths out of Aussie Banker, and Jamie Spencer's been aware of that, but he, he can't chase when before she's developed it. And he's obviously, the horse has run a tremendous race, and, is, and it's an upgrade on what we've seen of him in his two wins recently. And it's another progression. And I was going to say, actually, we, we, we give Holly Doyle a lot of credit here, but you have to give the horse credit too because he's shown a fine turn of foot there to, to clear away at that crucial point. Yeah, I think there's, um, ultimately Holly's rode the race really well and, and kept things straightforward on a horse who's very straightforward. He's had 101 days off the track. Archie Watson's got his team of horses on the weather in really, really good form, which is a standard thing to be saying. And um, the horse was seen to really good effect. And this was a, this was a competitive race, and it, and that that was a race winner move just before the intersection. Um, Ed Walker's her fleet Elaine has not run another solid race, probably was inconvenienced by trap position at a key stage. So you know, there's horses to take out of it, and I think um, going forward, Sun King, I'm sure George Bowie's team will be delighted. That's a f good first run for them. Really good run, yeah. And I don't think probably helped by that slow pace, and he was a little bit keen early on as well. So. I imagine plenty more to come for Sun King, particularly as that early market move for him. He did drift out late on, but there was plenty of support earlier in the afternoon for him. Having come from Aidan O'Brien, but the winner is um, Imperial Sands and does it very well from the front, bossing the fractions. And um, yeah, it was a nice, a nice performance. We're just waiting for the full result because it was actually quite close to third in the end. Bit of a blanket. Um, but while we're waiting, we can hear some winning reactions. Um, it's a winner a day for Holly Doyle in 2023. Imperial Sands, it must be a little bit of an old favourite because I liked him when he was a young horse. Highly tried. Archie kept him at the cells. He's done that nicely, really. Yeah, he's a horse we've always loved, really. Um, you know, we fought a hell of a lot of him um, as a two-year-old and um, we've kept hold of him and it's paid off, thankfully. <laughs> yeah, you must have been delighted, though, from Stall 11. You might have had to work hard, but really, he kind of come across in his own time and he got to the front nice and easy. Yeah, I mean, there's a bit more pace on than I expected, to be honest, so I just took my time, didn't want to use up too much energy. Uh, once I got there, I kind of got left alone and um, got into a really good rhythm and he's put the race to bed nicely. Yeah, no, he's done that well. Archie must be happy. Sunnier climbs at all, Saudi, Dubai, what's going to keep you busy as well as the, the UK action? Um, I've got no stints anywhere in the pipeline, but maybe a few in and out, but... Um, it's just good to be back and the team back at home. At, um, Archie's there, the horses are flying, so it's a great start for you. Yeah, you've come back exactly the right time. Nine wins already in the bag. Good luck with more. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you.